everybody, my name is Pete, this is John, and we are coming to you from Wickham Road Music. And what we're doing today, we are taking a look at some of the pedals that we have at the store. And uh, we get a lot of questions, John, about pedals. And because uh, people come in, they want to know, hey, how do you get that one sound off of this record? Or I've heard this or this particular style. And uh, with pedals, there's multiple ways to go. We've had uh, sort of... Pedals were the, um, the, the first trek when it came to signal processing, really, when you think about it, for guitar anyway. And, uh, so, and they've evolved over the years. So today you're going to bring us a pedal, and what is that that we're going to look at? So we're going to look at this Electro Harmonics pedal. It's the Small Clone. Okay. The Small Clone is an analog chorus. Now the Small Clone, actually, it gains... Uh, a lot of notoriety, like in the early '90s. Okay. You sure you heard? You saw a lot of guys that uh, they they um, they started plugging into this pedal and using some using some sounds um, to get this. But this is uh, the analog chorus, and chorus is uh, it provides a doubling effect. Okay. To the signal that's in there, and depending on depending on which chorus pedal you have, mm. it can color the signal in different ways, and yeah. it can, you know it can double or triple or whatever. Something like that. Right. Uh, but this one right here, this has got some really simple controls, and it's actually really easy to use on the fly. While you're playing a show, mm -hmm. um, it's easy enough to, to hit these buttons or turn this knob with a foot, gotcha. which is something that I that I appreciate. So we pop this small clone up. Well, first, let's hear let's hear a clean sound. Yeah. This is a clean sound, no uh, added effects. Right. A, little bit, a little bit of reverb, actually. Okay. We pop this small clone on. That's a very slight amount of force. Yeah, very subtle. Very subtle. Yeah. It's got two controls. It has a rate control, which is the which is the rotary knob, and it has a depth control, which okay. is just a two-way switch right here. All right. So with that really subtle amount on, with it's not a lot of depth. It's it's like the low depth setting. So okay. we can turn that rate up. You can hear it slightly increase. Oh, so that's we beautiful. Get that, we get that yeah. warbling mm -hmm. effect. Yeah. yeah, that's nice. You know, John, there's something about the analog signal that uh, just warms the heart, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? And there's like this warmth to it, and I don't know if we're going to get that, you know, through the camera here and through the microphones, but sitting in this room, yeah. it really fills it up, and it kind of, you know, it yeah. just, it's, it's like a... Uh, it's like a hot cup of soup on a rainy day. <laughs> it's you know a sexy sound. <laughs> yeah. I call it a sexy sound. Okay, it it's is. It's nice, yeah. Well, yeah, as, the, as, the, as we increase that rate, you hear it get a little yeah. bit thicker, yeah. and just as a reference. Oh, yeah. And then we'll drop She's that rate back in. Girl. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah there you go. Depth and a low rate. Yeah. Now if we if we put this rate up at uh, the twelve o'clock setting, uh -huh. and we go to the the higher depth or the deeper depth. Yeah. You're gonna hear a lot more warble. Yeah. Really detuning it. Yeah. You're gonna hear yeah, that the detuning tuning sound. Yeah. You know what's interesting about that? Because some people think, ah, oh, dude, that. Why, where would you use that? Yeah. You know. Uh, but here's the thing that I noticed, man, is when you're playing with a band. And when you really hear it is in recordings, right. because what happens is when you're able to detune things in a recording, listening to it by itself, it's just like, what were you thinking? <laughs> yes. Okay. But when it's in the mix, and here's the interesting thing is just for recording, all you recording enthusiasts out there, the point is nobody solos the sound of a recording when you're listening to your favorite band, okay? They don't do that. So what this is, these are little tips and tricks to kind of glue things together. And actually, that's one of the tricks, right. is to be able to do some detuning and add more detuning to something to kind of bring some glue in. Yeah. You think it's so, it, it sounds counterintuitive. It you does, know, It yeah. sounds like, why would you detune? Oh, wait a minute, I got a tuner here, and now you're detuning it, right? Uh, uh, I, I actually, I um, studied with a guy who actually did some recording with Bob Marley. Okay. And he was like one of these guys that was helping to bring like that reggae sound to the yeah. States. Right, right, and right. And one of the things that he talked about was they would do that intentionally with the bass. They would take the bass and they would make sure it was super in tune and then they would just slightly take it out of tune. Wow. And that was actually an effect that they used to make that bass sound bigger to make it sound a little more prominent in the recording. Wow. Yeah. They would, they would purposely detune it just a little bit. 
What makes it stand out potentially? The other thing is, is there's something that happens again when you have combinations of instruments. Right. That's because that's what it's really about. It's unless you are doing something solo and you right. want it to be a certain way. But that would be that. Uh, one of the things that I noticed here, John, was this mm -hmm. um, big knob. Big knob. I like that. Mm -hmm. You know, little knob. <laughs> little knob. When you're trying to gig right. and you're trying to get down there and make an adjustment. I, I don't know. I mean, where are you at with little knobs? Well, I like to do things with my feet. Actually, I gig a lot of times barefoot. I like to be barefoot. I'm from Florida. <laughs> I don't want to wear shoes. I wore shoes today. But well, usually when I'm gigging, so I So that's what I smelled all these years. <laughs> yeah. I had no idea. I wasn't, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> I did wear shoes today. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so it's super easy for me to reach a toe out. <laughs> and hit an adjustment. And this one, especially because it's got these simple knobs or simple controls, it's really easy to make uh, to make adjustments on the fly like that. A lot of times you're dealing with low light or some sort of yeah, yeah uh, you can't see so purposeful lighting, you know, yeah. uh, where it's 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 not so that you can necessarily see on stage; it's so that people can see you on stage. That. And so the um, having those big knobs and those easy controls is really nice. So I think the packaging, I think what they should do with Electro Harmonics packaging is that they should put on their toe-worthy. Yeah. <laughs> toe-worthy pedal. In other words, you can adjust it with your big toe. Foot, foot and hand <laughs> controls <laughs> available. That's good. Can you show us some more? Let's let's hear some more sure. stuff that you could, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. or even change the tone up. Like what about like a little yeah. dirt on there, you know? Sure, we could, we could totally do that. If we, if we keep this depth... Uh, to be that deeper depth, that wider, that wider yeah. throw, and then drop yeah. that rate a bit. You still get bigger. You still get a bigger sound, it's really but really big. You lose some that detuning effect. Yeah. Now, yeah. And if we add a little. Yeah. This was a this was a sound that I heard a lot, like maybe in the later '80s and '90s, okay. and some of the guitar players yeah. that come out of that come out of that that scene was they would throw a chorus on top of a on top of a distortion. Okay. On top of something like that, and it would help to thicken up that distortion a little bit. So if we, if we had just distortion, right, right, and mm -hmm. then we throw some chorus on top of that. Oh yeah. So it helps. It helps to thicken it up. And then, if you want to get weird with it, by all means. <laughs> and all those sounds. Lucy in the sky. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I'm just saying, Lucy in the sky. Yeah, that's well, that's awesome. And it's all uh, again that analog circuitry, which is really. It, it's it's different, you know what I mean. It's not necessarily a war between analog and digital, right. but um, it has a, a sound to it. And in fact, I, I was talking to a, a friend, uh, in fact, just yesterday uh, yeah. on the phone, and we, he was talking about his pedal rig, and he converted all of his stuff to analog stuff. Right. You know, and I think there's like this resurgence of people seeing that you know what there is something about that that, that heritage where we came from. Uh, and it's not not it's not just about nostalgia, right. but there is a sound. There's totally a sound. There's a sound, you know, and and, it, and it's a part of the experience, you know. So yeah. enjoy that part. Uh, any drawbacks with this? Do you feel is there something there that uh, uh, there's you know? there's two that I wish that I wish I could change. One of them is pretty easy to bypass, but the other one is not. The first one is the click of the button. It's kind of loud. Yeah. And if ever I'm in a quiet setting and okay. I'm gonna pop that on, yeah. it's kind of a loud pop. Yeah. And I don't, I don't see it like that one is not so bad. This guy, I mean the other ones, but this guy for some reason, I don't well, know what it is. Yeah, it's, it's almost like yeah, it's, the, it's almost pitched. Like the one's pitched a little bit higher. Yeah. This, it makes it sound a little on the hollow side. Yeah, too. yeah. I think that's what it might be. I think maybe there's a lot of space in the. I don't know. I, I need to put some Sonics in there, man. Maybe yeah. that's. <laughs> put, a little, put a little foam padding a in foam there, padding, you know, yeah. some egg crate. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we're on something. Maybe that, we can invent. That would, that, that's probably my biggest gripe with that one. It's just kind of a loud one when it pops on and off. Mm -hmm. The other one is actually the 9 volt um, jack. Okay. The polarity is, ver is reversed. Oh, yeah. You don't pay attention to that. Yeah. 
So, so yeah. um, normally it's it's a negative center, right? Is that what it normally is? I think is? it's positive. Positive, positive center. center yeah. Whatever yeah. the normal. I always forget. I always have to look and see. But um, we got a 50-50 chance to get yeah. this right, <laughs> yeah. and we're gonna hear it in the comments. Yeah. Tell us, tell us what it is. We can look on the back, but um, whatever the, the the standard or the, you know the majority of pedals out there are one way. This one is is the opposite way. Yeah. Um, for my power supply, one of the neat um, one of the neat cables that came with it was it actually has a nine volt adapter. So on the end, it's got the the two little cups, the positive negative cup that you would normally plug into a okay. um, uh, the nine volt adapter inside the pedal. Yeah. It plugs right into that, and and then it just goes to the uh, the plug like any other um, it's got the little uh, you know whatever these guys are called now the name yeah. is eluding me now that we're on camera talking no about worries it. yeah so that that the standard jack. yeah the, the standard jack, jack okay. um, uh, style plug that plugs okay. into this power supply so it's an easy one to get over yeah um, it's an easy one to bypass and it's got a battery compartment it's not like something you have to unscrew to get at it right so it's kind of an easy one that's cool to, to get but if I had yeah. my druthers if I could say if I could change this that would I, would, I would change the polarity of the of the uh, of the output there so it was a standard one. That's awesome. Any last minute thoughts or anything? No, I mean it's a it's a great pedal. It's I've used it in a lot of different ways. I've actually used it before um, playing an acoustic guitar. Okay. To, yeah, to, we should have asked about that too. To, yeah. to, to kind of do some like lead stuff on it. I, I remember I was at a gig and it was an acoustic guitar gig. But the person putting it on was asking if I could do this like lead thing, but they wanted more of an electric sound. Okay. And this 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 didn't really provide a distortion or an electric sound, but it thickened it up a bit sure. enough to kind of catch the sound that they were looking for. Right. Okay. Um, well, do me a favor. Do me some uh, sure. like some clean finger picking stuff, even though sure. it's not. Uh, yeah. This isn't an acoustic guitar, but yeah, they seem to get kind of a, a sound here. Sure. Yeah. Like. Sweeten it up, do something different here. Sweeten it up and give me some jazz kind of sounds, like some thick Some jazz, jazz. sounds, sure. Because when you have like those, uh, the harmonies and the color tones that are happening in jazz and you add mm -hmm. chorus to that, um, it can like blow the roof yeah. off of the overall emotion, you know? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's something good to know, man. That's a good thing to know. It's quite um, yeah. Here we price go. point, what do you think about that? I mean, where are we? Price point was great. I don't remember what I paid for this guy, but okay. um, it was worth it. Okay. It was it was a, it was a good investment, and I and I use it tons. And again, you know. Well, chorus is a staple. I mean, you got to have it if you're yeah. if you're doing anything with a pedal board. I mean, there's certain things you need to have, yeah. and that's one of them, you yeah. know, because it really does make a, a massive difference in the right. size of your sound, I mean, if anything else. And, yeah. and I, I think of it as like emotional, too. I mean, there's just like an emotional pull. And then the coloring, I mean, it brings color and, yeah. and dynamics to the sound. So you got to have uh, a good chorus. So, man, totally. thanks for sharing this. Is there any last-minute thoughts? No, that's about it. It's a great pedal, great company. Nice analog core sounds. Yeah, they've been around worth, forever, by the worth way. The, Electro, worth the purchase. Yeah, absolutely. Electro Harmonics have been around forever. Yeah. And they do have a ton of different pedals. We have the pedals uh, at the store. Uh, Wickham Road Music has many Electro Harmonic pedals as well as other brands and so forth. We also have tons of guitars, tons of guitars. large acoustic section, a large um, electric section. We also have piano, keyboard, PA. Uh, drum section, uh, we're also doing percussion, and tons of uh, uh, music instrument rentals as well, so that's pretty cool, um, and a great lesson program, and if you're interested in learning music, um, we would highly recommend checking out Wickham Road Music, um, not just because we work there, but uh, we know, uh, and we've been around, and we've seen lesson programs, and, and this one is not done. And so John's an instructor there, and uh, so you can check him out. 
And uh, we appreciate you guys hanging with us as we went through this uh, small clone. And if you have any comments or anything that you want to add, you know where to do that. And uh, you guys, until the next time, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day.